here we are, Balls Out Comedy, B&J Balls Out Comedy. We've got Dave Greaves with us today. Woo. Welcome everyone. All right. Hey, thanks for having me. Episode 3. If my maths is correct. Episode 3, yes. Episode, episode 3. 3, 4, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll yeah. see how we go. We're all very comfortable. Oh, that's cool, Dave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Fix it. How are you, Dave? Yeah, not too bad. Yourselves? Yeah, good, man. Good, mate. What's uh what, what's happening for you in the comedy world at the moment? Oh, a little bit busy, a little bit busy leading up to the Adelaide Fringe and uh, the comedy festival. Yep. So uh, cracking down. Apparently, I'm supposed to be funny. So. I think you are. Yeah, get on to it. That's why we got you here. <laughs> <laughs> really selling yourself. You fit, uh, you fit get tickets years. right now. That's yeah. how you sold him. No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought I was, but then somebody turned around and said, "Holy shit, you are actually funny." I thought, oh, "Wow." Maybe I might just try and make something of this. <laughs> that's, that's not bad for a comment afterwards. I like, oh, thought you'd be funnier than that. <laughs> That'd be fucking worse. What, what, what is the best compliment you've ever gotten? Uh, you mean in, in comedy? In, in comedy or just in general? Oh, I if I want to know, I'll call, I'll call you Mrs. Yeah. But no, like, what do you... Uh, look, um, uh, it's, it's probably from um, uh, uh, people judging me on the way I look when they first see me. Yep. And then after they see my set, and, and I've got a fairly tame set, mm. and they go, oh, gee, you're actually nice. <laughs> Thanks very fucking much. I can change that. <laughs> Buy my album. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. So how, how long have you been doing comedy? We like to get a bit of a profile yeah. on uh, who, who we got in. Uh, look, I've been doing comedy for about 18 months now. Yep. Yeah, about 18 months, so I'm done. Because I think I've only known you for a good six Yeah, probably about, about six months. Ish. Yeah. yeah, about six months. Yeah. Ish. Um, you know, I was um, just hitting pretty much, for the first 12 months, I was hitting pretty much just the same open mics. Um, uh, I started off, you know, not getting very many laughs and how does this work and working on the sets. Well, that's a good thing. It means not up yourself. Yes, yeah. that's, that's great. That's, that's, <laughs> that was that was the theory. I do try. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm a middle-aged white heterosexual man. I've got to be able to pull that back somehow. Oh, you can't be that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I know. I've been trying everything to change it, but you know, uh, no, nothing, nothing. Yeah. Uh, just got to live with it. <laughs> no, it'll happen. No, I, I, yeah. Look, I, I only met you. My sense of time and date is probably as good as my technical ability on a computer, but. Um, I, I, I've seen it. I've definitely seen a growth from when I first saw you. Yeah. A little open mic, and then I, 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 I was personally a bit shitty and get through it raw. When, uh, <laughs> when, when we were there at the ESP, because I think you nailed it. But, yeah. Um, look, it's it, it, it is what it is. There's actually been a fair bit of discussion, um, not just with our one at the ESP, but there was a, a, another one. I think it was at Howler. Yeah. Uh, at Howler, and uh, a couple of people didn't get through, and. Um, some of the audience disagreed, uh, and so and okay. that, that went through on the social media. And it's like, you know, I wasn't there; I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I know one of the comedians involved, and let's just say there's a distinct uh, discrepancy between the way they were judged yep. at, at what we did and Judge, what apparently judge tampering. No, no, I'm not no. going to suggest that because I have no proof. Don't uh, <laughs> No, I've, I've, I've heard some stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I would, I would. Just call it. It's, I mean, we, we call this podcast, you know, Balls Out Comedy. We oh, abs absolutely. Call, Look, call the shit. Why yeah, not? I, 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 think, I think if you, if you as a judge, get, get a lift from a contestant <laughs> and oh. you vote said contestant in and they get through, okay. that's... Um, that's how I got to do your room when that was. Get, when I, when I gave you that lift hand. No, I saw. And you that. asked me for that favour. No, oh, okay. I, no, I saw those hands and I thought I need those around my balls getting a tickle. So no, that's that's a different story. Callous, but. baby, callous. You Don't put hear words it. in my mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of doing it myself. No, um, no I heard some shit and uh, uh, look, I think you went about raw the, the wrong way. You didn't get up. Uh, with a notepad or your phone. Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't go over time. No, I didn't go over time. You I, didn't, uh, you I didn't, didn't. I didn't lose my place on the phone, which no. was the biggest laugh of the yeah. night for it. And um, you didn't. Yeah. You didn't. Um, you didn't mention how hard how how hard life was. No. So no. Um, I do. I, I do have a plan for going into the next raw though. Cause yeah. I've got one more raw that I'm allowed to do. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the most blokey set I can do. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a truck driver mm -hmm. and further blokey. And I'm gonna do the whole set in an evening again. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you're picturing it too, aren't you? Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I am. I'll, um, I'll be I'll be playing later. <laughs> I just realised that you're on camera. I, I am picturing it. Um, no, I think you had a very um, obviously. I'm just starting, well, sort of starting out as well, and I'm a nobody. But I think you did a really good set, um, and we we realised that that was probably the biggest audiences that we're both. Yeah, and and look, at, 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 at the end of the day, I, I had some very good advice very early on from um, some experienced comedians here in Melbourne. Brad Oaks being one of them. Yeah, legend. And um, he turned around and said, the yeah, best thing about Raw is not Raw, it's just the audience. Yeah. Oh, and, 100% uh, agree yeah. with that after what I saw. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you get up, it's probably in, in, in the first, you, know, you can do it three times and guarantee in those first three years, it's going to be the biggest, most friendly audience you're going to get. Yeah. If you do it each year for the three years. Yeah. And take your material, take your own material, go up and do your own material, gauge the crowd, see what the crowd's laughing at, enjoy your time with the crowd, and if the gods of comedy happen to pick you, then great, but don't expect it because it ain't going to happen. Have, have a hundred bucks ready in your pocket, I think. Is the, um... No, I'm not paying that. No, <laughs> no, no I, I think you're really, because like, you know, it, it, it's one thing to get up in front of like, I, I personally find it hard when you get to a room and it happens, you, you get to a room there might be half punters, half comics Yeah, yeah. that's rough because you, you know, like they're judging you it's like... I, I, I did find it funny that uh, actually at the at the SB4 Raw um, Geraldine Hickey who was one of the uh, MCs turned around and said that you know, Raw is not the be all and end all and um, they were talking, uh, Reese uh, Nicholson yeah. was also MC. They were lovely, by the they way. They were I've awesome. They were yeah. absolutely brilliant. Um, and they were saying, you know, when you did Raw, who 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 got through? I don't know. Yeah. And, yeah. and Geraldine Hickey, I think it was Geraldine Hickey, said, yeah, yeah, I remember the one who won when I got through to the end. And the only time we ever saw him was on the weakest, or her, was on the weakest link. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And, and that was it. That was, it. Wow, that was the yeah. only thing that that person apparently ever did after Fucking winning hell. Raw. And it's like, yeah, Raw really doesn't. <laughs> you were clearly too professional on the day, so, you know, uh, that's yeah, your own fault. Well, yeah. How dare you for growing? I wasn't, I wasn't raw enough. <laughs> I was only getting enough. craft and putting it out there. Fucking hell. Uh, no. There was a good, well, there was at least 100 people there. Uh, I can't judge uh, I was, I was speaking to, I was speaking to the sound guy. They reckon that they had 150 punters. Oh, fuck. Okay. In, a, in the Royal. And 28 comics. 28 comics. So yeah, it was it was great. It wasn't as big as the first year I did it. We had yep. uh, we had over two hundred punters oh. the first year I did it. Okay. Um, and that that was that was pretty much the point where I knew that yeah I wanted to keep going with this because yep. I'd only been doing comedy at that point for probably about four months. Oh shit. Okay. And um, I got up. Um, Luke McGregor was one of the MCs that year. And uh, no, read out off TV. He's good. The yeah. guy that does that Raven Ravens Hall or whatever it's called. Yeah, the ABC. ABC the I, I don't watch much TV yeah. to be honest. And so Luke McGregor was up there, and I do like his. I do like his comedy. I, um, I, I, I like watching comedy that I can't do. Yeah, that, that's yeah. for me. That's the be one end all. It's like fantastic. And uh, I got up, dropped my open, opening line, and I saw him laugh. And it's yeah. like I've been, up, I've been up there for fifteen seconds, and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Thanks very much. <laughs> best thing you could get away from <coughs> that day in particular was you didn't bomb you had a good set yeah. so now you know you can, and this is what I took away from it as well like I hope you guys know, know me well enough that I'm not up myself in that term but I, I think I did a good set it felt good I didn't bomb in front of the biggest crowd I've had for comedy yeah. so I was like yep yeah, I'm cool with that how, how do you how do you guys find the I get I get anti when it's crowd like as, as in the competition Competitions freak me the fuck out. It kind of didn't feel like a comp. No, no. Look, mm -hmm. and, and and because of what I've been told very early on, I, I walked w walked into it with just the the only person I'm in competition with is myself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at, at the end of the day, the people that are in the back room judging. 
Yeah. Um, they don't mean anything. Oh, I, I'm, I'm there. The only person I'm in competition with is myself. Yep. And the judges for me is the audience. Okay. And if the audience has a good laugh, if the audience seems to be having a good time, mm -hmm. I'll one. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and and it's it, it, it's gonna it's gonna come out in the end anyway. As as um, Jared and Hickey said, yeah. You know, you look at all the winners and how many of them have gone on. Yeah, yeah. But you look at all the people that haven't won and how many people are currently doing comedy that didn't win Raw. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And it's like yeah. comedy is going to win out one way or another. Yeah, yeah, true. But then on the other side as well, you look at Chris Wayne as he won it in like 99 or 2000 or something. Mm -hmm. Fucking great comic. So there's yeah, yeah. exceptions, obviously. But Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but it was an experience and a good learning. Yeah. I've still got one more, so I'll try and do something spectacular for the last one. Yeah, okay. yeah, dressing gun, done. Bathrobe and a pipe, and you gotta do it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna there. hold you to it. Yeah. Challenge accepted. All right. <laughs> Watch your space in a year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, two years, two years. I'm gonna give the next one a break. Okay. I will. I will definitely give the next one a break. But I wanna. I'll. I'll, uh, I'll come up with something so over the top, Loki. Don't forget the high heels. And the high heels. So. <laughs> I think I've got a pair of something. No. <laughs> it's amazing what truck drivers find. <laughs> Can I get mine back, Dave? <laughs> a few of the sequins fell off. <laughs> so what's the better happening? Like where 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 are you enjoying gigging the most? Like where oh, anywhere, anywhere with a crowd, to be honest. Yep. I, I will happily go anywhere. There's in the Melbourne scene, there's all sorts of different crowds and different rooms, and um, uh, I've been working really hard over the last 12 months to try and get a brand of comedy that can play pretty much anywhere. Yeah, um, good thing know, to do. Um, I, I, I don't go particularly edgy. Mm. Um, it's just not me, yep. so I'm not doing it. It's as yep. simple as that. Um, but I, I love. You now, one of the, one of the biggest highs for me was playing in a room where there was. Uh, a fair LGBTIQ community uh, in that room and uh, telling jokes about being a truck driver and having them laugh and it's like, hey, I'm doing some funny stuff, that's great. What was, uh, it, what was the room? Um, that room was um, uh, Rookie Nights. Rookie Nights. Rookie Nights okay. Imperial uh, in the city. Yep, yep. And, you know, the first time I got up and I did the truck driver stuff there and having having the audience respond to it, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, and I got it pretty much looking just like this. So yep. I am certainly not a part of the LGBTQ community. <laughs> and, um, and and having them laugh at the material that I was presenting, yep. it, was, it was just uh, that was that was that was a bit of a high. Okay. You know, it was it was still fairly early on in what I was doing, mm -hmm. but it, it showed that what I that I was heading in the right direction for what I wanted to do. Excellent. Uh, so, something we like to, uh, you're only a second guest, so I can't say this is a regular <laughs> thing, but something we want to get into to build the profile of you. Um, what, uh, we've all bombed. I don't believe any comic who says, oh, I don't know. Lies, bomb. lies, it's all lies. Yeah, I don't trust any fucking comic who says they don't bomb. We bomb all the time. Yeah. I, f I finally broke my uh, my two week bombing streak at the apartment, for example. I'm fucking, I'm happy as fuck. Excellent. What, can you describe or recall the worst gig you've ever had? The worst gig I've ever had. Um, to, to to put the put the focus on the gig was probably a tad unfair. Um, and no, no, it's very unfair to say it was the gig. Uh, it was the open mic room gorilla um, in Hawthorne. Uh, I'm surprised I'm allowed back there. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, the the bloke that was on before me. He killed. He did a magic job. He was brilliant. He was funny. Everyone was laughing. And um, I've spoken to him since then, and he said that one of the things that he likes doing after he does his set is like he likes getting out, clear the stage, get out, decompress. Yeah. So he never sees the next set. Yep. And and that's fine. I completely respect that. That's not a problem. He sticks around. He sticks around, so that's great. But he did so well that night that when he went up the stairs and left, so did everybody else. <laughs> Fuck. And left me with two 18 year old stoners. And I yeah. got up there and I did my opening line, and I saw one of the stoners look to his mate and go, What? 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 what, what, what? <laughs> and I, I, I'd had a bad day that day. I'd actually had a bad day that day. And I kid you not, for the 
four and a half minutes, I hate monologue to my set at these two fuckers. Grumpy truck driver! Turned around and walked off stage, and, and, and it's so ingrained into me. Nadine Sparks was MC, and the look on her face was priceless. She was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and Paul Sharplin, who runs the room, and he, he turned around and goes, hey Dave, you might want to inject a little bit of personality. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That was all me. Uh, that's all my problem. I know it's all my problem. I'll get it right next time. It took me two months to get back there again. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to say, Paul Paul Charlton is probably one of the best room runners in Melbourne. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, absolute absolutely. gentleman. Uh, he pulls you up on when, yeah, you, when you fuck yeah. up. He, yeah. let, he lets yeah. you know when you've done well. Yep. Um, yeah. Not in a oh, you get a you get a participation star like nothing yeah, like no. that. But like like when I fucked up, he's told me. And he's like, you know, you know, you try somewhere else for a little bit. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe don't do that. <laughs> but no, he's very. He's probably one of the most real people in the yeah. in the scene, I reckon. Yeah, look, and, and as I walked off stage, before he said anything to me, I, I knew full well that oh, that was me. <laughs> that was me. Bad day, bad situation. But at least he could. I allowed like, myself to get thrown. Yeah, at least he could admit that. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a that's a. It is a hard room. Let's let's call it. It is for for what it is. I mean, oh, look, it's, it's fucking rewarding. It's, yeah. it's, it's a hard room. When you nail Gorilla, it yeah. feels fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, look, I've I've been back there a few times and I've done well. I've, yeah. I've done well there um, since I, since then, <laughs> but you know it, it's you need to be knocked. I, I do believe that you need to be knocked down. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. You yeah. have yeah. to be knocked down at some point yeah. just to be able to get that that smoothness, that edge. You know, um, and do you do any crowd work there? No, I tend not to do too much crowd work. Um, I've noticed you, that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't do too much crowd work, mostly because somebody looking like me talking to you from the stage tends to be <laughs> scary. So, How you going down there? Oh, <laughs> fuck. Is this my Uber driver? <laughs> yeah. So I do, te- I do tend to steer clear of that. Uh, yeah. Occasionally, I have somebody pipe in. Um, uh, I do break one of the one of the so-called rules of comedy about not not asking too many questions. Yeah. Because you're leaving things open. Um, okay, that can be fun. It can be fun. It can be fun if you've got a, if you've got a crowd that's responsive and not full of wankers. Um, but uh, you've got to be able to judge that. Right? Yeah, but wankers yeah. are good. I reckon that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, if you've got the good quick comebacks. If yeah, you've got the good Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah true. And and you can't let them win. Oh, no. you're not a comic anymore. You're just a dude on stage. Just stab, yeah. Stabbing him with a bread knife. <laughs> 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 so, so you wanted to feel it, Benny? Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do it. I do it. This. I do it. This one start to uh, to a set where I get up on stage. And just got a quick question for you. Do I look like a drunk driver? Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I usually get this. No, you don't. Yeah, that's great. And, and I, I had one bloke turn around. And go, no. And I went what? <laughs> But you've got to, this is the thing, you've got to do it in the dress. How cool would that be? The same oh, yeah. You've got to look like a truck driver. You know, it's like, oh. Oh, yep. I know what you need. You need like a, what's that colour? Like a maroon movie sort of, I'm trying to see something that looks like that colour, but like a, a maroon sort of um, plush dressing gown. Yeah. And then you have an embroidered naked lady like on the back of the BW. Like on the back of oh, yeah. yeah, do that. I yeah, yeah. yeah. on the truck driving Hugh Hefner. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out with a pipe. <laughs> with the fucking Mac board on the back of the It's something ridiculous. This is my night this is my night shift out. <laughs> Welcome to the Grado. <laughs> I do, I do work as a truck driver, you know, um, I don't, I haven't given up my day job yet to do comedy full time, I'd like to, boy would I like to give up truck driving, um, but, you know, uh, you see some really interesting truck drivers at times, you know, I, I have seen a truck driver get out of his truck wearing furry slippers and reaching into his little, little side locker on his truck and pulling out his steel caps. <laughs> putting his furry slippers into a plastic bag. <laughs> it's like, oh man, you've been doing this way too long. You're way too comfortable on the road. You need to stop. 
mobile and sees this. Yeah. Oh, they don't care. They, yeah. just, they just don't care. I could be a truckie. <laughs> I do my shopping in my pajamas. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I can't, I can't do that. Why Look, not? I'm a shorts guy, so I love shorts. See, I'm not a shorts guy. Um, you know, but I, can't, I couldn't do the pajamas. Oh, it's great. As long as you. That was a wait before you go in case you <laughs> get a hard on free ball. That's fine. <laughs> I was going to say at night, so doing it before you go to bed is not a problem. Yeah, but the thing but in the morning with the morning glory, you don't want to go shopping then. No, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it gives you somewhere to hang the shopping. But, but the problem is, <laughs> <laughs> I, I sleep naked, so I don't have jobs. <laughs> I might get arrested at the shopping centre. <laughs> Alright, I'll try. <laughs> Some, someone might be into that. There's something for everyone. Who knows? Hey, Who knows? put your pants on. What? They said to come naked. Oh, I'm, I'm sleepwalking <laughs> again. Sorry. <laughs> where um, where where do you want to be, or where do you see yourself in a few years? Um, keeping making keeping the same steps, but going forward, just yep. simply. Um, I, I'm not I'm not going to give myself a timeline. I'm not going to say I'm not here by this stage. I'm throwing it away. Yeah. Because it's something I enjoy doing. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I very quickly realised that there is serious joy in getting up for me and just making people laugh. That's that's great. Um, and you know, um, if that means uh, moving forward, my profile gets bigger yeah. and I start getting crowds, serious crowds. Great. If that means I then take a slight detour and start you know, organising my own gigs yeah. and booking other people and, and, and doing it that way, then that's what I'll do. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, um, I, I, I and the stars, but one step at a time. Then just keep going, just keep going, that's all it is. Have you got, um, got any more plans to, if we can talk about that, have you got any more plans to run something else? Uh, yeah, so I did. I did run a room for ooh, almost six months um, until the room shut down for uh, renovations. Um, they cancelled. They cancelled everything there. Yep. Um, there was uh, not just open mic comedy, but they had music on on Friday nights, and they had trivia on on Tuesday nights, and it all got canned. It all got canned. So um, it'd be really cool when they finish the renovations if they call me back up. But they they've also admitted that they're going to do a massive restructure into what they're trying to do. So. It may not happen, but I'm certainly keeping my eyes open for more rooms. Yep. Um, I've been given a couple of leads, which I'll be following up after the comedy festival. Yep. Um, yeah, shit time to organise anything. Yeah, no, it's it's just it's that, just bad. Yeah. But um, some rooms that have space that's not being used, yep. um, and I certainly want to try and keep it out of the city too. There's yep. plenty of rooms in the city, and all you end up, I I am of the feeling that. You, the people going out to see comedy on any given night, you're not, you're generally not going to find the same person going out on a Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. No. They're not going to go to all the gigs. So, so you, I think, I am of the belief that comedy in the city has almost reached saturation point for Melbourne, and we need to get rooms out, out of Melbourne. And really? that's that's what I'm going to focus on down there, down the east, eastern side. Um, I was the room I was running is in Cheltenham. Yeah. And I'm going to keep out around that area. And, you know, yeah, for six months I was getting for six months running around for six months, and I was getting return punters every second week. And it was a good room. Yeah, that yeah. was. Yeah. I was stoked. <coughs> it's a really cool room. So it's 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 amazing what you learn doing that sort of thing. You know, I thought I thought making sure all the comics getting free drinks, uh, getting a free drink. Don't get too excited. A free drink um, was pretty much what I was needing to to get to, but it turned out the food, um, the, the place was putting out nibblies for everyone to have a, have a bite of during the night. Yeah, that um, was pretty nice, yeah. That was, that was, that was more appreciated than the alcohol. And there's a lot of comedians now that aren't drinking alcohol because they need to live lives as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rock stars are dead. Yeah. No. No, it was, no it, was, it was a really good room and I, I was honestly gutted to see that post. Yeah. Yeah, look, there was there was a lot of people. I'm, I'm still. I mean, it's it's been down for only two months now. It's been closed for two months. Already. Now. Oh. Yeah, um, and I'm still getting I'm still getting people saying, you know, when are you looking at running a room? Oh. So, uh, obviously, what I was doing, people was appreciating. Mm. Oh, yeah, you've yeah, done. Yeah. And yeah, I want to uh, I want to do that again because we we had fun. You know, 
at, at the end of the night when you've still got most of the comics still there and the punters are coming up to you going, hey, thanks very much, that was great fun. Yeah. And, you know, the room's kicking us out because we're still talking to all the punters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, good. the room's going, fuck off, we to go to bed. That's, yeah. a, that's a good problem, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was very grateful to have done that room yeah. uh, once, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, look, it, uh, in, in the end, um, I, I was booking the room Jeez, a month and a half in advance, virtually, because yeah, it was it was getting quite the fold. Yeah. So. Not surprised. No. It's good. Very good. Very good. I, I I and you know I enjoyed I enjoyed running it more than I thought I would. Though. That was that was just great value. It's good when it goes well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's sort of stress pit if it doesn't. But yeah. 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 And so where so where did you start your comedy? Where did you so in the sense of. Did you do the school of hard knock knocks or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I, it all started off for me was uh, uh, actually my my birthday, mm -hmm. and my wife and my kids gave me the course as a birthday present. Oh, nice. That's cool. And um, I'm pretty sure they just wanted me to get out of the fucking house. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <that's what they're laughs> you need a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad, that grumpy truck driver thing—that's fucking real. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I went and did that. I was lucky enough to do it with um, Greg Flint, oh. uh, which was absolutely awesome. Um, and from there, I just yeah started hitting the open mics um, for for good or bad. At those early days, you you, you certainly yeah you'll 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 have a good joke and everyone will laugh, and then your next joke, everyone's looking at you going, what was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you start to clean it up. Oh, excellent. And now, so you're doing Adelaide Fringe. Yeah. So uh, is that like uh, off your own bat? Uh, no, no. It's it's on a. Um, uh, I'm doing the Adelaide Fringe through the um, school part knock knocks as well. Okay. And it'll, be, nice. it'll be the first Adelaide Fringe I've done. So it's only a single spot. Yep. Um, and but it gives me a chance to get a, get over there, see what it's like, um, see what the crowds are like, without without investing too much myself. Yep. Yep. You cool. know? And then, you know, next year, um, maybe I'll do it myself. Maybe I'll do it myself. Maybe I'll get together with a couple of people and I'll do I it. I reckon we do it together. And two we'll dresses, yeah, two high heels. Yeah. yeah, why not? What do you reckon? We, we, we <laughs> do what we I'd pay to see that. <laughs> Damn. Can I, can I come out as, I'm, I'm lonely, can I come out as a pimp? <laughs> Geordie's our pimp. Well, I, can, I can see him in the big blue hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. massive hat. I'd like to introduce my bitches. <laughs> And uh, so yeah, I'll do, do the Adelaide French that way. Mm -hmm. Oh cool. And um, I, that's going to be a full on week for me because I'm doing um, uh, first Friday on the Friday night. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the Adelaide Fringe on the Sunday, and then I'm doing then I'm emceeing Ballarat on the following Friday. Oh shit! Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> busy. Yeah, it's very busy that one. <laughs> I haven't told the wife yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ballarat's good fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm, I've done Ballarat a few times now, and I'm stoked to be him saying it. I think all three of us have done Ballarat yeah, on the yeah, same night, haven't we? Yeah, 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 we have. What so. a room. It's a good room. The fact that they can get those punters back every single month. And, yeah, there's there's a real scene. I was I was really stoked. There's one bloke up in Ballarat um, who, <laughs> who does this massive high-energy routine. Um, this is Jackson. Jackson. Yes. Jackson Tate. 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 Yeah. Jackson Tate. And um, I actually got him down to my room on one night. Yeah, no shit. And uh, he, he messaged a whole bunch of his mates that lived in Melbourne. And so we actually had all bar a packed room that night. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and yeah, he came did. down and did that. And the, the guys that were, the, guy, the, the guys that owned the restaurant that we were performing, yeah. they were like, what the hell is this? <laughs> And for about a week afterwards, I had people going, what was he doing? You know, it was funny, but wow. But he, he, he was saying that he, had to, he, he, he wants to get out of Ballarat and yeah. start hitting the Melbourne gigs more often. And I'd be, I'd be stoked because there is nothing like that guy yeah, like, he's doing the same. And I, I think he would take it by storm. He should do Raw. He should do Raw. Yeah. If he doesn't get through, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Just because just you don't get through raw doesn't mean you're not funny. Like, just in case there's anyone new. 
to comedy <laughs> who's going to listen to this. It doesn't mean you're not funny. It just means you didn't fit a box that was predetermined to get you on triple J or something. Yeah. And yeah. Actually, speaking of one thing I noticed, but, but, uh, I, I, I shifted places when I got there, so I was standing at the back, and then me and a friend realised that there was seats still available. And so we're sitting in the seats. So <laughs> I thought, unfortunately I wasn't sitting for your bit, but I saw your set, and yeah. then uh, after, the, after the break, sat down. And I just, I just happened to do a little people watching, and I turned around. Uh, one of the judges was on their phone the whole time. Yeah. I think they were looking up profiles. Yeah, it's quite possible. Which I don't understand. No. But, Why? you know, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, one, one, of, one, of, one of my mates who, who turned up to Raw this time around, um, I, uh, oh jeez, I'm going to get, get blackballed for it. Oh, I don't care. No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to say his name, I'm not going to pay me. No, 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 basically one of, the, uh, one of my mates who turned up was saying to a few of his friends at work, he had a mate playing in Raw, oh. and uh, the guys at work that he works with going, oh, is he, is he, is he, is he white and male and heterosexual? And my mate went, well, yeah, last time I looked, yeah. <laughs> and they've gone, oh, he won't get home. And, and, these, are, as well. and <laughs> these are people, these are people that have nothing to do with comedy, yeah. nothing to do with the comedy scene. And it's like, it's like, it's like it's one of the worst kept secrets around. Oh, it was blatantly obvious. Yeah, but we're not bagging that out. I mean, no, shit, no. Whatever, no. they can do whatever they want. Uh, yeah, but me and Dave wearing dresses next year. Yeah, next <laughs> not next year, the year after. Year after, we'll, oh, yeah, be, wearing, we'll be wearing evening gowns, and we'll do we'll do a double act. Yeah, we'll do, oh. well, yeah in the raw. No, not in the raw. Double act. <laughs> double act. Wrap it up. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it clean in that sense. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, don't worry about getting blackballed off this. I'm not. Um, no, no. No, no, it's just... Nobody listens to this, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to do? Exclude me from some room? That already happens. <laughs> well, I'm not Liam Cross. I'm not going to I'm not gonna block all <laughs> off anything. Don't worry about that. Great. <laughs> we just started a war. I was happy to avoid this war. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into when you were I did, I did. Um, Damn, or I get the guns. No, I, 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 don't, I don't understand blackballing people. If you don't get someone's comedy, you don't get it. It's down to personal taste. That's what it is. Right. But it's saying that someone can't do this room because of X, Y, Z. I don't. Yeah, yeah. look. Um, yeah, if, 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 if you're a room runner and you know your audience, like if, if, if you've got a high proportion of you know, 12 to 16 year olds, don't book somebody who swears a lot, you know? Book, what kind book, of rooms are you book, seeing book, run where they're 12 to 16 year olds? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, there was one night at my room, there was one night, I, I kid you not, this is 100%, at 10 minutes to 8, we kick off at 8 o'clock, at 10 minutes to 8, we had two punters in the room, I thought, oh, this is going to be a quiet night. Yeah, I didn't know when that happens. And then at 5 to 8, we had six couples come in with their 20 kids. All under twelve. Jeez. All under twelve. Mm -hmm. And um, I, and and I'll tell you what, the the there was no planning to this, but the guys and girls that were there that night, the professionalism that they showed was next level as far as I'm concerned. The MC for the night was Julian Finesse and I cannot oh, speak love more Julian. Yeah. I cannot speak more highly of him. Uh, he was laughing his ass off. He's turned around and said to me, "Guys, I've been doing comedy for for a number of years now, and it was only last week I thought I might try and write a clean set." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Julian do a clean set. And that's why I love it. <laughs> and he and he got up. He, he 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 took he took the bull by the horns and he got up and and he started talking to the kids. Yeah. He started and Julian's got the the most fantastic French accent, uh, and, and he started talking to the kids and he's. Where am I from? I think, so it's, I think it's pronounced fantastic. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's turned to the kids and he goes, "Where am I from?" And the first kid stood up and went, "Korea." <laughs> 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 what? Two and a half minutes with kids saying, "Where am I from?" And Korea, North Korea, Singapore, North Pole. <laughs> what North Pole? What the hell? What 
are they teaching kids these days? <laughs> I don't know, but it was one of the funniest routines I've seen Fucking in years. Hell. It, was, it was hilarious. The parents were laughing their asses off. Everyone had a great time. Yeah. We should get Julian in sometime. He's fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, very much so. Speaking of sequins, if you want a sequin dress, he could probably knock you one up. Yeah. <laughs> that, that onesie he's got, I, I went and see him uh, do... Was it Fringe? Uh, on, on one night, this is at... Uh, uh, Highlander, there was uh, Gary Jahal, Jared Gandry, and Julian. I can never pronounce Julian's last name, so I'm not going to do it out of respect, but um, the three of them shared a few nights, and I went to maybe three of them, I think. Yeah. And every night, Julian gets up in this onesie that's just covered in fucking sequins, and I was like <laughs> three, three rows back, I was like, I can't even fucking see it. <laughs> it was burning fucking bright. Like, it, was, it was incredible. But um, yeah, no, very funny guy. We should definitely get him in sometime. But um, I, would, I would love to have seen him do a clean set because yeah. I can't imagine it. it was in a good way. And, and, a good and, way. and he was emceeing too. So oh, it was, he, just, he just went on and on and on with it. It was, it was fantastic. Oh, it's hard. It's a, like, I came down and did your room. Yeah. And, and I swear a bit. Yeah. I'm pretty clean, but shit, yeah, right, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of kids there, what do you do? And I'm just like, I'll oh. Look, I, I'll, 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 give, I'll give credit to the parents that yeah. turned up, you know. Um, you, you, Did they know? No, no, no none of them ever knew. None of them ever knew. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that there was open mic comedy. The fact that there was A-frames with open mic comedy on, yeah, completely immaterial. Um, but, you know, the, the amount of parents that turned up and, and there really wasn't that many. There really wasn't that many parents who turned up with their, with their kids. Um, but the ones that did, as they left, you know, you, you'd curate a little bit. You know, yeah. you put up the people that you knew had the tamer material first. And hope, hope they clear out by a certain And time. then, yeah, then yeah. they can clear out. I mean, the, the night that we had all those kids turn up, we had one, one of the comedians, I think he almost had a nervous breakdown, oh, trying to write a clean set. Imagine. Because <laughs> he goes... I can't get five words in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm screwed. Who was that? Ah, uh, Gavin Ingham. Gavin Ingham. <laughs> I can't get five words in. I'm. I love that man. He's I should just go home. <laughs> <laughs> I I I uh, I emceed Gorilla uh, about two three weeks ago, and I met Gavin maybe a year ago at uh, the George, yeah. uh, which unfortunately is closed down. Hopefully it comes back one day. Andy Moradis run a great room. Yeah, but, great um, I think that's where, I'm, that's where I met you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. And um, I hadn't seen Gavin in ages. You know when you see someone online, I know who I'm talking to, I don't need to look at your fucking profile. And you just kind of forget what someone looks like. And we, we, we chatted after the George one night for a good hour or so and became mates. And anyway, I just... Forgot what he looked like for a bit. Anyway, he was, he was on the lineup at, at Gorilla when I was MC. I, I met him at the George, which I really hope does come back one day soon. Um, not sure what they're doing, but great room, man in brass, brilliant, brilliant comic, brilliant room runner. And um, I introduced the first act. I ran up the stairs. I forgot my drink, and someone just fucking like just grabs my ass. Like it's never been grabbed in such a way before. <laughs> And just took me by surprise, he wasn't expecting it. And then I turned around and I'm like, what the fuck? That was Gavin, I forgot what he looked like, because I hadn't seen him for about a year. He was just like, he was waving at me. So him, him performing to kids, <laughs> probably shouldn't have happened in the first place. Uh, not with, we're not saying anything, seriously. I'm not the lawyer here, man. <laughs> I know him well enough that We've I We've got say, guns, oh, did I say that again? <laughs> I'm not saying you should be on a watch list, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, he was wearing some Where's Wally fucking shirt, like, he was wearing, like, <laughs> so he's built for kids, I think, I don't know, but no, very funny dude, we should get him on sometime, but, um, okay, you want him to come on to grab your ass. Very funny, yeah. young, strong fucking hands, like, <laughs> it's not very often I get tempted to change sides, but, <laughs> when something like that happens, it sticks with you clearly, like, well, that's because he knew how to do it. Oh, he's yeah. obviously got experience. <laughs> Stop it, you two! No, okay. It's because he's a redhead, all right? It's because he's a redhead. I don't mind, man. Yeah, I don't fold mind. either way, so I'm just saying I'm a bit harsh with the redheads. It's not very often a redhead grabs my ass, so I remember it. I'm not complaining, Gavin, if you're listening. I'm not complaining. Definitely not. Remember, is it fondly? 
me, me and Dave, are. why don't you grab our ass, mate? What's going on? You know I've got guns now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving that for my own podcast. <laughs> 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 So what um what do you, what do you love most about comedy? Is it is it the fact you can you know make someone laugh uh, or yeah, and, look, it's and your influences as well. So. And my influence. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, for me, the enjoyment is simply getting a laugh. Yeah. Getting a laugh, um, and and the hype for me is having somebody come up to me after a gig and, and, and saying, "I really enjoyed that." Yeah, uh, not not a groupy thing, not nothing like that. Uh, my wife won't let me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the mic was off before. I've got guns again, but anyway. <laughs> um, just having somebody come up to me and going, man, I really enjoyed that, yeah. thanks very much. You know, I've, I've, um, you know, I've talked about how I've got a set, which is basically all truck drive, and I've had truck drivers come up, come man, you lived in that again. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, as far as influences go, um, you know, I grew up. I grew up with a lot of the old school um, two Ronnies. Uh, another, two, another two Ronnies. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Look, well, well, the you know they they do they do everything from just one liners, a whole rapid fire of run yeah, one liners. Yeah. They do skit. They do uh, sitting in a chair just telling stories. Yeah, yeah. You know, be, being able to cover so many different bases, just the two blokes, just the two blokes was was incredible. Um, uh, Dave Allen as well was a massive. Yep. Well, I really enjoyed watching Dave Allen. Very, very underrated as, as a comedian. Yep. I think I think these days, and he, he was another one that did everything from one-liners, sitting in a chair. I mean, <laughs> this is how far back it was. He would sit in a bar chair, not a stool, a chair, high up with a built-in table, with an ashtray and a scotch. <laughs> and, Fuck. And, and, and it'd be live in front of an audience, live to a camera, and he'd start telling stories and start telling the jokes and everything from one liners to stories. And yeah. That's pretty small. <laughs> oh, those days. Holy cow. And, and then, he'd, then he'd do, <clears throat> then he'd do, do skits, and some of the skits were as simple as um, uh, uh, Robin Hood showing the merry men the latest in arrow technology, and it was a bent arrow that could shoot around corners. <laughs> And he'd fire it and they'd go, did it work? And he'd go, yes, and fall over with an arrow on his back. <laughs> All the way to more complex ones of, um, I, and this is the earliest in driving comedy that I, I can remember seeing, it was a car pulled, cut off a truck, and there was another truck in front of it. And as the truck in front, they, they're all abusing each other, abusing each other. And as the truck drove off, you figured out that the truck in front was towing the truck in back. And as the rope between them t tightened up, the car flipped. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, so yeah, you, you're talking about little skits and big skits. Yeah. Um, Robin Williams, massive influence. Yeah. Massive influence. Um, uh, Was it live at the Apollo, I want to say? Well, where he's got... My mate Dan will be kicking my ass right now if he watches this, because we... We grew up watching that the, as well. The, the one with the stagecoach mm. in the background, uh, early eighties. No, 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 no. no. This you is uh, the sticks and stuff in the background. that sort of like sticks and shit. Was it like? Sort of. All I remember is he's wearing like a brown and red shirt. He's sweating like a motherfucker, and he's got a table, and there's like twenty or thirty bottles yes. of water. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Is that live at the Apollo? I can't. Or, uh, no, I don't think it was the Apollo. No, that was. Um, it was in L.A. Yeah, it was LA. Yeah, yeah, it was in LA. I can't remember, but that was brilliant. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now I've got one, uh, an old one that he did, which was in the early '80s, um, and he did it on, I think it was on Broadway, and it was oh. it was actually in a theatre. Oh wow! In a theatre, and they and they just left a whole bunch of props on stage, and in the end, he just he goes, "Oh, what's in here?" And he opens a box, and there's actual, like. You know, you know the stereotype opera singer in the Viking with the horns and shit. Like, well, that's what they had in there, complete with plaits. <laughs> <laughs> and he just starts messing around with that at the end, yeah. and, that up. and and he breaks into a rap. He breaks into a rap about opera. Yeah. And I was like, that's just. I, even if it wasn't spur of the moment, that yeah. it was just next level. 
How much how, how much of like Robin Williams stuff do you reckon was scripted? Like I remember reading something that he bought jokes off people, which I don't think. I, look, I, I think he would have had his arsenal would have. You, what can you say? He bought jokes. Yep, yeah, fine. If he did, but a brain that that works that quickly. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it was all written down. Yeah. Do you know, you've, you've got the story of how we got the how we got the part of um, Mork on Happy Days, yeah. and they were looking for somebody that could act like an alien without looking like an alien. I didn't realize he was on Happy Days. I yeah, he plays Mork on that. Uh, Mork and Mindy. Mork actually started on Happy Days. Oh, that's right. And um, and he came in. He came in for the um, uh, uh, for the for the speaking part for the audition, and. Um, Walked in, walked into the office, saw the executives, walked into the, walked up to the chair, stuck his head into the chair, and did a headstand in the chair. And they went, "You got the part." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's that sort of thing can't be scripted. That that's no. that's just bang, and that's what he liked. and uh, and he played the part so well. They went, "We've got a spin-off here." Well, there's one that you should see on YouTube. The, it's got um, uh, it's got him, Pryor, Richard Pryor, mm. and they're at the. Uh, Comedy Central? No, yeah. Comedy... What is it? Comics... Comic Store? Comic Store. Yes. Yeah. The Store, yeah. And they're, they're both there, and it was one after the other. Oh, and, wow. And it was just... Rob Williams came out, and... Oh, like, just energy, yeah. energy. And then you had Pryor come out, and just the smoothness of the way he operated. You know, but... But also, you watch some of Pryor's early stuff. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you sort of... You know the suit, the whole thing. I mean, he always had the ability. I mean, mm. and he and he came, he came from that that mentality of thinking of the vaudevillian type yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, and then he's gone into this whole. There's a new. It's like now with the new era of comics out there. You've got to be, you've got to be a certain way. You've got to act a certain. You can't say this. You can't say that. And um, and being free to say it all. I think that's the yeah. that's the key. You yeah. know, and not being scared to say it. Yeah, you know, and we we, we get into that whole m mindset of, oh, I'm not going to say it. I don't want to offend half the people in the audience. But you go, you go back you go back to and, and we'll, we'll keep it you know keeping it relatively, well, let's say modern ish. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin Williams. If you go back and look at Robin Williams on Broadway, which I'm I'm, I'm sure is the early eighties. Yeah. And he's doing jokes about Ronald Reagan. Yeah, as as the president of the United States, and oh, it wasn't that long ago that I rewatched it. And God, it's funny. He talks about how Ronald Reagan was Disney's last wish, wish and animatronic president. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and you know, I, I'm not telling his joke. I'm describing his joke, and you guys are laughing. Yeah. You know, good comedy. Good comedy stands yeah. the test of time. Oh, of course, you know, yeah. and that's that's part of the reason why there are some. Comedians that don't get played as much now as what they used to, yep. you know, and 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 we are we are seeing a fair bit of that, not not just with comedy but with all sorts of culture yeah, as well. Yeah, you know, there are TV shows that we can't watch on TV. Kingswood Country with Ted Bullpit, you know, that that's not getting replayed. And they tried to, they even tried rewriting and rebooting the series, and it just didn't play. What what, what was that about? Like, Kingswood Country. Uh, the character is uh, Ted Bullpit, and basically he's a racist, sexist character that always gets his comeuppance and um, even even to the point where his his daughter marries uh, a bloke of greek or italian heritage and is referred to consistent consistently as that bloody bog <laughs> on prime Sounds time like it should be on abc on prime time tv yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and it was called kingswood country because he wouldn't let anybody drive his kingswood yes yeah, uh, and, and that's what it was, and and you know it, it, if if you if you watch that show with a critical eye, you know it's it's always about that sort of person getting their comeuppance, and either it's his wife doing it to him or his daughter doing it to him, even his son's a disappointment to him because his son's not not doing a, a conventional man's job or, or some shit like that, yeah, you know, and he was always getting his comeuppance, but we're not allowed to we're not allowed to have that on TV anymore because. People aren't viewing it that way. Yeah, yeah. 
That's what YouTube's for, I guess. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's hard to find. Oh, really? Yeah, it's hard to find. I don't think anyone's actually. I, I, I'm sure there'd be someone on YouTube. I'm sure there'd be someone on YouTube. But they've also. They've also got And you, and, and you, you can see some of the outtakes from a Rose Carter connection. And he oh, was saying, he was saying some very inappropriate stuff. Having said that, though, go back to the late 70s and early 80s mm. and watch Play School. Yeah. I figured this out from a very early age. My, my sister is 12 and a half years younger than me. Yeah. And there was one, one episode, and I remember it, it had John Hamblin and Lanny Hazelhurst in it. Yeah. Okay? And the idea was that they were going on a boat cruise with all the all the toys, yeah. all the toys. And Noni comes in with this big roll thing, and John goes, "Where's the boat? It's right here. That's not a boat. Yes, it is." And Noni pulls the cord, and it's one of those automatically inflatable boats. Yeah. And John turns around and goes, "Oh my, it's inflatable." <laughs> <laughs> Now, I remember seeing that episode as a little kid and going, yeah, it's an inflatable boat. And then I saw it when my sister was 14. So I was 16 at that point. Yeah. And I saw it. And she's going, yeah, it's a boat. And I looked at my parents going, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and mum and dad are sitting there going, yeah, now you know why we watched it with you. <laughs> Wasn't there a play school host that was just blitzed all the time? Like... Was one of them drunk, or am I thinking of something else? No, no, the, the comedy company did a skit on Play School oh. with Glenn Robbins, yeah. and they were hitting the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> he hit the bottle last night a bit, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of shit you can't find on YouTube, did you guys ever watch Lane on Woodley when, yes. when that was around? Yeah. I've, I had the DVDs, like, my, my, my dad got that uh, for me when I was young, we used to watch it religiously, it was the funniest shit, and, you know, you move out of home and all that sort of stuff, you lose stuff, I lost the DVD, I can't find it anywhere, I can't find it on YouTube, if anyone knows where you can find it, drop a comment please, I'm dying <laughs> to watch it, that, that fucking scene with the bunny, with the, with Frank, dresses the bunny for Easter and he gets decapitated by the helicopter <laughs> trying to drop off eggs for kids. Fucking brilliant. I, I used to be a massive fan of all the ABC comedy. Yeah. All, uh, all the way back with, with Big Gig and everything else. That That's where it started. Yeah. For, for us in that g generation, yeah. the Big, Big Gig was massive. Was massive. Like, that was like, you you would literally, it was such a fucking fucked up stru stru structure of the show that they had the two hours, but yeah. they, they never stuck to the script. No. Nah. So it just kept blowing out. <laughs> big, big gig, was that like, uh, was it a stand up comedy or was it a sketch sort of thing? It was, oh, it was, it was stand up comedy yeah. with, it was stand up comedy with the occasional uh, uh, sketch in it. Like one, yeah. of, one of my favourites was always um, the comedian Jane Kitson. Yep. And she did. Um, Patsy, the. Uh, was it Patsy? Candice, 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 yeah. who was who always came out wearing all the gym gear, the leotards and, and stuff. leotards and everything, and she was ditzy as all hell. Yeah, and she she, she would actually do basically a stand up routine yeah. in character, hanging upside down from Roman rings. Yes. Okay. And it was like, holy crap! It, 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 <laughs> look, it, it, see, to see it now with all the shit going out there. Yeah. yeah. You go. But I reckon it still yeah. stands up. I've watched it. She, yeah. she also did another it's, one where she still played a, 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 a stewardess. Yeah. And um, the the one word the one word that says everything about that thing is uh, she's talking about a whole bunch of guys going to Bangkok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't say that today. <laughs> and she is she is sledging the guys that go for the sex industry. Oh wow! Absolutely sledging them and. You know, I, I can. I was old enough to know what was going on when I was watching that, yeah. and I was wetting myself. It was the most funny thing. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, you got Anthony Aykroyd, Anthony Aykroyd, and and all these people would do just normal stand up. Yeah. But they would also play characters doing different stand ups and things like that. Anthony Aykroyd playing the advertising executive, and the amount of white powder that would get thrown around the stage at various points of time <laughs> it was just. Absolutely brilliant. It was brilliant. It was, yeah, it was very well done. And you haven't got stuff like that anymore. 
No. And the thing is, we can do good stuff in this country. Yeah. And I don't know why we're just not. And it was all done. It was all done live too. Yeah. Like they oh, had. Wow. It was all done live. It was done in a tiny studio, but there was three or four stages. So the MC would get up on one side, which was mostly Wendy Harmer. Oh, really? And then she would throw to another stage, and the cameras would pan around to the other stage. So the camera would oh. come running through, so the yeah. camera would go through the audience, and it's sort of like, where's it going, where's it going, and it goes boom. Oh, it's sort through. of like countdown. Yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah it's awesome. a stage, and then that person just does their yeah, no shit. two or three minutes. And, it's, it's, it's the sort of thing that I'd like to see somebody get together and, and almost drop it as a as a podcast, yeah, you know, uh, if 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 we could if we could do something like that on Netflix and have it drop once a month, sort of thing, I reckon it could could get a following. Yeah, do a do a good do a three two hour show or something like that. Big, I mean, big gig was only ever an hour, yeah. but you know you could do a two hour show, drop it once a month, and I reckon you could get quite a following, and, and I think that'd be great fun. But it'd, it'd be certainly great for Melbourne comedy. That would be cool. Yeah, that'd be very cool. All right, well, I think you got to get going. It's 4.30. Yeah, I kind of do. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, well, it's you right. can hang around. I don't mind. No, 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 it's all right. It's your kid, not ours. <laughs> yeah, <I'm fine. laughs> no, no, no. See, he's going to see the second it's, family. It's, 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 <laughs> I'll be fine until I get home. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm in trouble. He didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> we put him up to it. All of it. <laughs> Sorry for keeping your husband. No, no. no. So just give us a uh, quick, uh, say your dates, where, where you're at. Well, my phone and stuff's up there, I'll write them down. Okay. There you go. Here we go. Thank you very kindly. Oh, All right. Two phones, Walter White, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> That's for give the Give us a second. <laughs> <laughs> the trucky powder. <laughs> trucky tablets, sorry. So yeah, look, on the 3rd of March, I'm at Highlander. Sweet. Um, and on the 6th of March, I'm doing First Friday at um, at the uh, uh, Auburn, at the uh, Elwood, 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 oh, Elwood, right. Elwood, yep. Elwood, Elwood Lounge. Lounge. Yep. Uh, 9th of March, I'm doing the Adelaide Fringe. 13th of March, I'm doing the Main Bar in Ballarat, Ooh. and I'm doing the I am doing the Melbourne Festival, but the dates are to be confirmed. So, okay, cool. so but I'm, I'll be doing a uh, I'm doing a full show. Minimum of four nights, yep. and I'll be doing it with uh, two other comedians. We're doing an hour show. Nice. Um, I'll be doing it with uh, Lisa Gattenby and Andy Chambers. Oh, excellent! So yeah, all, all three, all three very different comedies, and yep. but we're all going to be doing kind of comedies about our families and uh, all lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, great to have you on today. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very it's much been, for coming. Down. It's been a great value. Excellent. Dave Graves, everybody. Dave Graves, everybody. Keep talking for a second. I'll just uh, start.